patch 1.5 is finally here and in this video I'm going to take you through the most important patch notes that you might have missed. Stick around. What's up guys, it's Skill Up here, patch 1.5 finally upon us. One of the things I really wanted to knock over was a good detailed look at the patch notes. Now I'm not gonna go through every single patch note here. Simple reason being that a lot of it is really obvious and you're gonna see it when you log in and when you play the game. What I'm gonna talk about in this video are the more subtle patch notes that you may have missed or the ones that I think are gonna have the biggest influence on the game. So if you like this video, drop it a like guys and be sure to subscribe for plenty of Division 1.5 coverage and with that let's dig into the patch notes. Now one of the biggest changes that you might not be aware of is that patch 1.5 introduces new named gear. So right now we have plenty of named weapons and sadly most of them are not particularly good. What we're going to get now in patch 1.5 is a set of named gear. There is a total of six of them. There's a mask, knee pads, holster, gloves, chest piece and backpack. They're all named for certain things or activities or bosses or whatever and they all have special unique attributes that no other gear piece has. I'm not going to go into the detail about these. I'm going to do a separate video on them later on when I've had a chance to collect them, test them and properly review them. But they do look pretty nice. Uh, I'll give you a link in the description below that lets you see an image of all of these. Um, but do keep an eye out for them while you're farming and you can definitely expect to hear more from me on these in the future. Next up, enemy armor damage in PvP is now a thing. This has been a topic of much confusion, but it's extremely important to understand if you PvP and you have enemy armor damage either on your gear or on your weapon or on whatever, then you are going to deal bonus damage to that target. However, you are only going to deal one third of your total enemy armor damage in PvP. So if you have say 60% enemy armor damage, you are only going to be doing an extra 20% bonus damage. It scales down at a factor of 0.3. So do take that into consideration. Divide your enemy armor damage by three. That is how much bonus damage you will be doing to someone in PvP. The other thing that's been brought into the PvP mix is stagger. Now stagger as we understand it in PvE will literally stagger an enemy. They'll be running towards you or moving and they will literally sort of keel over a little bit, they'll stagger for a few steps, they won't be able to aim their weapon and it will take them a second or two to recover. In PvP, this is different. What you're actually doing here is causing the enemy to flinch. So while they're aiming at you, their aim will be slightly thrown off. So it's a very different thing. So just make sure you check that out. You're gonna see that on uh, shotguns and on marksman rifles primarily, since they have a fair amount of stagger on them. But uh, yes, it can be quite useful to you if PvP is your thing. The talent tactical advance has definitely seen some play these days. In particular, M44 builds or even shotgun builds love to sort of use this to stack huge amounts of bonus damage, increasing the chance that you can one-shot someone. That has been changed. This skill now caps at a bonus damage of 30% max, which means it's nowhere near as strong as it once was. And by far and away, one of the most exciting aspects of the patch is the stash size increase. Your stash has increased from 70 items up to a total of 150 items. It's more than twice as big as it was when you last logged into the game. That is pretty damn sweet. So just dump all your stuff in there. You are really gonna struggle to fill that up, at least for a little while. Massive's attempts to continue to make crafting more attractive continue. In this patch, enemies now have a chance to drop crafting materials. They will drop more materials the higher level they are and the higher the world tier you are operating in. So keep that in mind, that's gonna be really nice. I'm personally looking forward to doing some crafting. I haven't done it in forever, so make sure you're not capping out on your materials unexpectedly because they will pile up fairly quick now. One important change is that vendors now scale with your gear score. In the past, you might notice a particularly good weapon or mod at world tier four, and you may think, hey, I want to pay less for that, or I want to use it for an alpha bridge set. You could change to world tier one and buy the same weapon, just with lower stat requirements to fit your alpha bridge build. This is no longer possible. Now your gear score will determine the level of items that you purchase from your vendors. So that is off the table. Now on weapons, there's a few talents that I wanna point your attention to. The first is Swift. Now Swift has been one of those really, really garbage talents that I have said to immediately roll away the minute you see it on there. Basically the percentage decrease in reload time was nowhere near good enough to make it a worthwhile talent. That has been changed 
changed. It has been moved from 15% reduced reload speed to 25%, which is a very chunky amount of reload speed. And if you put, say, a uh, reload mod on your underbarrel with your M60, you are going to get a very, very quick reload time on that weapon. So this is absolutely a talent to consider now. I'm not saying it's top tier. I'm saying that on specific weapons, in particular those belt-fed LMGs, it can be very good. Provident is another talent that was causing a lot of problems. The bonus damage that this talent provided was pretty out of control sometimes. So rather than try and rebalance it, the developers have straight up removed it. It will no longer appear on any weapon in world tier five and it will not be available on recalibration for any 256 weapon. And finally, hurried, focused, and disciplined. You'll remember these talents as the ones that are specific to the PP-19 SMG, the G36 Assault Rifle, and the SVD Marksman Rifle. These talents are no longer exclusive to those specific weapon types. So yeah, you'll be able to get those on other types of weapons within those categories. One thing that's also very important and that I need to do a lot more testing around is the changes to hip fire. Hip fire became king in patch 1.4 because the belt fed LMGs really came into their own. Now it seems as though the developers are trying to rein that in. Hipfire now has much, much more recoil on it. And that's actually more pronounced on some weapons than others. Going from most impacted to least impacted, we have marksman rifles, LMGs, assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns, and then pistols. The Vector 45 ACP and first wave Vector both have larger magazine sizes. They've been increased to 25, which is uh, important to note because now there are two different magazine sizes for the vectors so make sure you get yourself the good one and also the mp7 the old favorite up to patch 1.3 has received a base damage increase of nine percent very much deserved lmgs have also received some adjustments so damage to targets out of cover bonus has been slightly reduced for all lmgs of gear score 256 so where we saw those values rolling in the vicinity of around 20 percent you can definitely expect it to be lower now the m60 specifically the best weapon in the game in patch 1.4 its base damage has been reduced by three percent i'm really not sure what the point of that change was it's such a minuscule amount of damage regardless the m60 is still one of the best weapons i'm not going to say it's the best yet because i haven't really looked at things like the famas or the mg5 in enough detail but uh, it's still going to be very competitive so don't worry about that change it's very minor the m60 and the m249 will now take a lot longer to reach full accuracy when fired I can confirm this. I've definitely tested it a lot on the uh, PTS. There is a noticeable difference. It will take you a good sort of two, two and a half seconds to reach max accuracy, where before it was really only about one second. So it's a big change, but I think it's worthwhile because those weapons were very, very strong given that innate accuracy. And finally, the Hungry Hog, the weapon everyone was chasing last patch, its base damage has been reduced by 13% to prevent what they call was a scaling overlap with the implementation of World Tier 4. Five. I'm unsure exactly what that means. I mean, I can guess, but regardless, it's a big reduction. And uh, I think it really shifts the meta with regards to what we're going to be chasing. The Hungry Hog is definitely not what it once was. For my money, I'll be chasing an M60 because the comparable damage and the fact that I can roll whatever talents I like on it make it a much more attractive offer. For you console fans out there, shotguns have been adjusted. Uh, they've lowered the strength of aim assist for shotguns, which is specific to anyone playing with a controller. Shotguns were a bit of a nightmare for anyone playing on PlayStation 4 or Xbox, so it's good to know that they've taken this step since aim assist was very much the cause of this issue. They've lowered the effect of accuracy on shotguns, which means that your reticle will be larger. Uh, you know, headshot base damage has been reduced from 80% to 60%, uh, which is obviously a huge factor because, you know, the one-shot shotgun builds were all predicated on stacking huge amounts of headshot damage and then shooting your target in the head. The showstopper has less bonus accuracy when you're in cover because that was actually bugged. And finally, the M870, its base damage has been reduced by 12%, so uh, it's certainly not what it once was. A huge swing at shotguns there, but definitely one that was required given how toxic they were. There have been a number of new weapons added to the game, in particular the MG5 LMG, the M700 Marksman Rifle, the UMP submachine gun, 
the uh, snub-nosed Rhino pistol, and also the FAMAS assault rifle, one that I am particularly excited about. And with those, four new named weapons have also been added. The Golden Rhino, which is a snub-nosed pistol, the Urban MDR assault rifle, which was formerly known as the Blind Battle Rifle, the Tommy Gun, and also the Thompson, which are actually the same weapons, just with two different variants of them. These drop at a variety of locations, not sure exactly where yet. I'm going to be looking for that very, very hard as soon as I log in, but uh, there they are. Gear sets have also received some adjustments. The final measure four-piece gear set has been changed. Its grenades can now be picked up every eight seconds instead of 15 seconds, which is great because that set was quite unusable. The Hunter's Faith three-piece headshot damage has been reduced from 20% down to 10%. My guess is that this is directly to reduce the impact of those one-shot shotgun builds in PvP. And finally, the Frontline gear set has been added, but it's actually not called the Frontline. I'm not sure why the patch notes call it that. It's called the Defense or D3-FNC from memory. Now, it's the one that allows you to use your uh, SMG while using a ballistic shield. It looks pretty rad. I cannot wait to get myself a four piece of that. There have been some minor changes to abilities. Pulse now has a shorter duration and our first aid self heal heals for less. So obviously the developers have seen that these are the go-to skills in the game and they're maybe trying to make other skills a little bit more attractive by taking the edge off these. Tactical Link and Survivor Link, their duration has been increased slightly as well from uh, 12 seconds to 13 seconds. My guess again, to try and take the focus off Recovery Link, which pretty much everyone is running these days. There are also some minor bug fixes such as, you know, players can no longer obtain high end weapons when they are too low level to use them. That was an exploit that got fixed. The Medved and Warlord used to drop at 163, even if you were doing uh, World Tier 4. So that has been fixed. And finally, Judy Walters, the uh, the echoes that you need to collect in order to platinum the game on consoles, uh, that has now been fixed. A lot of people message me about that, really chasing those trophies. Um, if you had that bug, it's now been corrected, fingers crossed, which means you can now platinum the game, put it on the shelf and never play it again. No, I'm just joking, but you can get your platinum trophy. And that's it, guys. Those are the major patch notes. As I said, I didn't go through every single one of them, but these are the most important. These are the ones that are going to influence your play. I think it's a pretty solid patch. Uh, there were definitely some hairy moments during PTS when they looked at doing some really silly stuff like changing enemy armor damage and making it a major stat or having ridiculous talent requirements for weapons. Those things have been fixed. They listened to us and for that I really thank them. Massive like any development studio is far from perfect but one thing they do is listen and they do take our feedback very seriously so I think we really have to give them credit for that. Anyway guys let me know in the comments below what you think of the patch notes. I'm very keen to jump into patch 1.5 and just start grinding away. I hope you guys are as well. For now, if you like the video, do drop it a like and please hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Take good care of yourself, guys, and I will see you in patch 1.5. Bye-bye.